This is the Macintosh Performa 6360, a pretty basic desktop Mac from 1996. These Macs were known for not really being too great, mainly because of an earlier version of this machine, the 6200 CD, was considered one of Apple's worst ever machines and literally shipped from the factory with a bottleneck. And while that Performa released in 1995, it had a 75 MHz PowerPC 603, usually came with around 8 MB of RAM, and had some weird onboard 1 MB graphics chip. But my Performa was released a year after, being released in October 1996, with this machine having a 160 MHz PowerPC 603E, 16 MB of RAM, although this one is upgraded to somewhere around 80 MB of RAM, and I believe the same graphics chip from the 6200 CD, though it might be a little bit updated, I'm not sure, and a 1.2 GB hard drive. So why did I buy this Macintosh? Well, I've been wanting a desktop Mac that's newer than my 1987 Macintosh SE for a while. I just wanted a desktop Mac that would be on the retro setup, that could run Mac OS 7.5, 8, 9, whatever I was feeling, this can do just that. But also I got a really good deal on this thing, and it came with a bunch of stuff. And I gotta say, it's really fun playing with this thing, and I got some extra goodies that I was not expecting at all. In regards to what this machine has going on in the exterior, there isn't a whole lot going on. At the front we have our CD-ROM drive, our floppy drive, an IR transceiver of some sort, volume up and down buttons, and a headphone jack. Then moving it around to the back, we have our power, a DB port, an Apple printer port, an Apple modem port that seems to be covered, a parallel port, microphone and speaker jacks, an internal dial-up modem, a power button, and the 15-pin Apple display port, as well as the manufacturing sticker which this unit was manufactured in November of 1996. So yeah, not too much going on on the exterior. This project actually spans back a few months. I was originally working on this project back in February, so it's been a while. So I'm going to roll the footage back to when I first got this thing. This is quite a big box. Oh yeah, look at that. Here's some of the manuals. We got the Macintosh reference, Mac OS. Oh, we got even more. Great. Setting up your Macintosh Classic. Uh, I did not buy a Macintosh Classic, but all right. Oh, looks like it's been chewed up. Looks like by a kid. Now we got a bunch of other software. Is this even soft? I don't even know what this is. There's a bunch of stuff in here. And we got, yes, this is all the software. Oh, and the getting started with your Macintosh guide. Here is the, some of the CD-ROMs. Okay, well, we'll look at that later. Oh my goodness. The Macintosh keyboard. You know, I have my own keyboard that I'll be using because uh, this one's not quite my favorite. Then we got the mouse. One button is all you need. Look at that. There we go. Okay, so it looks like the back plate thing for the power supply at the back just kind of fell off during shipping. I mean, it's supposed to go like right about here, but uh, you know what? I think it's fine. So he this right here is the video, and now I actually was prepared for this because I have one of these. This is a Macintosh Display to VGA adapter. And I'm not even really sure if this is one of the Macs that uses sync on green. So I have this sync on green to separate sync kind of adapter here. And yeah, basically in theory, it'll just work like this. Or I'll connect the monitor just directly to this if it's not sync on green, which I don't think this one uh, uses sync on green. But, you know, I still have this because, you know, you better be safe than sorry. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's plug this in. Okay, uh, I plugged in everything. Let's see if it works. Oh, that's promising. I know you can't really see too much on the screen right now, but uh, I'll try to get that fixed. What is this? I actually got the camera settings right. Okay, let me bring it over here. Here we go. We are running system software 7.5.3. Oh man, this is so cool. Okay, okay, what is even on here? Oh, a whole bunch of junk. Okay, well. This might have belonged to a school, the learning company. I think this belonged to a school at one point. AOL. This thing does have an internal dial-up modem. I could try dial-up on here. Well, hey, we know it works. So I want to buy a network adapter for this just because I want to connect this thing to the network and not have to use a dial-up adapter. So uh, yeah, uh, we got this. Let's actually go back really quick and let's take a look at some of the, the books and some of the software 
and just see what else it came with really in-depthly because I kind of want to know what came with this thing. Okay, now I'm back at the uh, the desk. So for peripherals, as you probably saw before, this thing came with the Apple Design Keyboard and the Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 2, which I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not really much of a fan of this keyboard or mouse, so that's why I'm using the Apple Desktop Bus Mouse 1 and the, and the Apple Desktop Bus Keyboard 2 or whatever it's called. You know, that one. Now for the software and stuff it came with, uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff here. Some of which I don't even know is actually specific to the Performa, but I don't know, we'll look through, we'll look through some of this. What I want us to check out first is what's in here. We got, there we go, Macintosh Performa User's Manual. Yup, that's definitely a Performa. Oh yeah, look at that. Check this out, this little fold out thing. Setting up your Macintosh Performa. Users manual, modem manuals, Apple Talk microphone. Option, I do not have the Apple Talk microphone. I wanna get a monitor that looks like that someday. I think my Sampo Alpha Scan 511 will do the trick for now. Until I get a monitor like this. Steel sealed Apple color printing. Huh, okay. When your applications need more memory. Thinking things. Would you like to win a $10,000 bond for your child's education? I do not have a child. The American Heritage Dictionary on your Macintosh. Netscape Navigator, the Mac Pack. That's amazing. Oh, wow. Whole bunch of stuff in here. Wow. Installing the amazing writing machine. And then we have a quick start to Grolier Multimedia Encyclopedia. Okay. There's a lot of education stuff included here. Oh my gosh, there's a lot more here. Electronic Arts 3D Atlas. Learn. Guide to Apple Customer Services. Ooh. Limited warranty for USA customers. What if I take my Performa into an Apple store and ask them for warranty and I give them this slip? <laughs> Apple software licenses. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Hacking list for Macintosh Performa 6300 series. Dude, I got a new Performa, man. Look at all this. Click art. This registration card is actually a free gift in disguise. No way, dude. Show me that shit. Apple mouse pad. What the hell? I want an Apple mouse pad. What? Okay, so here's the last of what was in there. The amazing writing machine looks like it's a full full guide on that program. I don't think that's installed on there. It might have it might be actually. Aha, uh -huh. more software send in stuff. And then we have inside your performa. Tons of stuff here. So Here's the rest of the other stuff. That looked like to be all the Performa stuff. So what is all of this? I mean, you have this here, which is the software for the for the Performa. You have the, you know, the Performa CD, bunch of other CDs for other software that it came with, all right? Um, and other stuff is in here. But what are these? What is this? It's easy to find software for your Mac. You know, uh, whatever. Uh, I don't even want to. It's kind of sealed. I don't even want to write the seal. That's <laughs> okay. Getting started with your Macintosh. So what is this for? Oh, is that, is that an SE? What computer is this for? I mean, this is definitely an older one, but if it is, I have a Macintosh SE, but now I got the getting started guide for it. I mean, that's cool. These are the, okay, well, it was, stuff is supposed to be in here. Oh, well, no, it's, no, they're in here. Oh, 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 dude. Oh, man. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, well, uh, HyperCard. HyperCard Basics. Um, what is the HyperCard? Setting up your Macintosh Classic. Uh, I definitely don't have a Macintosh Classic. These both are for the Macintosh Classic. Special features of your Macintosh Classic and setting up your Macintosh Classic. Yeah, I don't have one of these, but I guess I'll... I should probably get one. Why not? You know, that's an interesting haul of software. Um, the fact that I got unused Apple stickers, that's kind of cool. So let's put all the Performa stuff back in uh, the, the thing. Yeah, apparently I don't know how to put papers in a bag. There we go. There's our Performa stuff in here. And then these are the rest of the other... Well, this is also the Performa thing, but... And these are the other stuff that I don't know... Well, they definitely go. don't go to this. First thing I want to do, I need to change the screen resolution. 800 by 600. There we go, that's better. All right, so now I have it the way I want it to look. Launcher, what is this launcher thing? So this keeps coming up on startup, I notice, and uh, there's a ton of stuff here. Adobe Photo Deluxe, Acrobat Reader, Quicket Special Edition, 
Clara's works. There's a lot of edutainment software I noticed on this computer. We opened the hard drive. One of the first things I noticed was just how much, yeah, edutainment was on here. You got stuff like Kid Picks on here, Head Rush, Deer, Deer Avenger, Carbon USA 3.0, there's a bunch of stuff. You go to applications, there's even more. Looks like there's some interesting uh, programs here, Science Hate. Actually, could, I want to try to open that. Polaris Works, Word Processing. Can we open Science Hate? Yeah, I think most of the stuff I'm going to just go ahead and delete because I don't really need this. What is Assessment 1? What? Uh, this doesn't look like it was here originally. You know what's hilarious? I have a friend named Ben and his ability to cap is amazing, bro. And then like, what is this? <laughs> like, what? Ben Carson. Can I see like the date maybe of when that was made? Okay. So like 2000, what, what? So January 22nd, 2004. <laughs> okay. A part of me kind of just wants to use the Macintosh Performa CD and just completely reinstall macOS on here. Especially because, you know, I don't really want to use a computer that has like files from whoever had this thing from before me. So, dude, I, I haven't done this in a very long time. I sure like being inside this fancy computer. <laughs> I remember when I was younger, I had a uh, an older PowerBook G3, and it had macOS 8.0 on it, and I would just play with the speech thing so much. Time flies when you are fun. I think that one was my favorite uh, when I was younger. Sound. I haven't heard that one before. It's so loud. Oh my god. Well, you already know what sound we have to choose. Of course. You know, I really am considering just popping in the uh, Performa CD really quick and just reinstalling macOS. CD-ROM discs. There we go. Performa software includes system software and other programs. Uh, software version 7.5.3. So that's macOS 7.5.3. Whole bunch of stuff in here that you got like, yeah, hey, look at that. Word perfect. I got Adobe Photo Deluxe, a Blockbuster, Blockbuster movies and videos. A lot of these I recognize. And then you got Club Kidsoft. Our Times, Multimedia Encyclopedia of the 20th Century. Well, not my time. And then yeah, you have the Macintosh Performa guided tour as well. Okay, yeah, why not? Let's reinstall macOS on here. Wow, I could really clean that off. Could probably give this thing an entire wipe down when I'm done installing. So, I've never actually reinstalled macOS on a old Mac like this, so, so I guess this will be a learning experience for me. I'm just gonna assume that I have to hold down Alt and Option. Okay. I didn't, I didn't really do anything. I don't even think the disk drive is like plugged in or something. Like, what, what is going on? I might have to take a look inside. Yeah, I don't see anything on the CD drive over here, so... I'm thinking I might need to open this thing up and take a look inside because the disk is not showing up. Well, I have never actually opened one of these before. I have no idea how to do it. Okay, so that's how you take that off. Manufactured November 1996. Woo. Uh, this thing has been opened before. It has like markings on the plastic of when somebody else tried to, you see that? Oh wow, that's really small. Well, would you look at that? So as you can see, we have the dial-up modem. And here's the rest of the board. There's our PowerPC CPU there, 160 megahertz. Here's our RAM, which actually seems to be upgraded. This right here is 64 megs of RAM. So then what is this? Uh, thanks. I don't know what that means. So what I think I'm gonna go ahead and order for this thing a network adapter, because uh, I might wanna play around with some networking with this thing. Okay, so that's the board. How do we even get into the rest of the bloody thing? Oh yeah, also that snap from the front earlier. There was actually this. I think I might be able to fix that. Yeah, I don't want to mess with that. I just want to get the top off. Nah, cause like, 
Whoever did this before me is stupid because I'm pretty sure it just slides like that, no? Oh yeah, it's definitely supposed to slide. You know, I think I should probably look up how to do this before just raw dogging it. Okay, let's see how we're gonna open this. Huh? Okay, whatever the f I don't even- So what can you put in these computers? What even is this back here? Oh, okay, that's a whatever that is. Uh, okay, well, I mean, I got everything out. Here's the disk drive. Yeah, nothing too special. The only problem is, this is a SCSI drive. And I don't think I have any SCSI drives, so... I'm just hoping that this drive will just randomly start working. Maybe after I reseed it. Okay, it's, um, it's, it's whatever. I'm just gonna put this back together now. Also, this thing is dusty as all f***. Uh, I think I might clean some of the stuff out a little bit. Just, you know, make it look nice, uh, not only on the outside, but on the inside as well. Like, right, here, check this out. Look at the side. Oh, holy shit. Let's just get this. Definitely washing my hands after. Ugh. Also, here's the inside of the front panel, and here's where the volume buttons go. Now, I'm thinking that I can just kind of get away with putting them back in here and then gluing them back in place. Pretty sure I'll be able to get away with that. So this one's going to be a little tough, but... Oh no, do I not have any glue? Oh no. Things are about to get a lot more jank than they already were. Things are about to get a lot worse. Yeah, I believe it or not, I don't really have glue right now. So this is a super, super temporary fix, but just trust me on this, this might work. Before I do this, I'm gonna go wash this off in the sink. In fact, I'm just gonna take all these plastic parts and wash them off in the sink. So I'm uh, back and I cleaned off all the plastic stuff. As you can see, that looks very nice and clean now, as well as the side skirts and the top. Looks pretty, pretty nice. Got all that taken care of. Because some of the yellowing I was able just to kind of wipe off on the other plastic bits of the case. Wondering if that's the same for the front CD drive. Uh, you know what? A little bit wiped off. I'm just gonna keep going at it. All right, well, I'll leave it like that. It's fine. See what I can do about the buttons. It's gonna be a little bit scuffed, but I will try my best. Okay, this might be horrible, but damn, that kind of worked. Let's get the rest of the plastic stuff back on. All right, now here comes the scuffly repaired front plastic piece. Well, it sure does look a lot better. It looks cleaner. That volume button definitely feels like it's working. That one feels kind of like shit, but uh, you know, it looks, looks pretty bad too. You can still press the button though. I can feel it. That will have to get fixed some other time. I, at least right now, don't really want to deal with it. Let's put the rest of the stuff back on and just see if it still works. All right, it is now present day, present time. It is now August 26th, 2024. And uh, yeah, we're back with this thing. So where I was last with this thing, I was actually testing the optical drive to see if maybe me reseeding it will work. So let me just show you what's supposed to happen, for example. This is just a normal floppy disk, and if I put it in, yeah, see, look, just like that. You would see the icon for the thing show up on the desktop, and you can open it. I'm just waiting for it to uh, open. Yeah, see, look, just like that. That took way too long, but uh, yeah, you can see. So that's supposed to happen when you put a disc in. Let's try to put a disc in really quick. Something random off the shelf. But yeah, as you can see, it's a little while later now, and uh, nothing really happens. It's just kind of doesn't really do anything. I can kind of hear the disc spin up a little bit, but then it doesn't really do anything after. It just kind of spins back down. So I did order a new optical drive, and I did actually end up ordering the PCI network card that I was also talking about earlier. So uh, let's get to that. There we go. Look at that. Brand new Apple SCSI drive. That is exactly what we were looking for. Oh, it's brand new, okay. Yeah, I picked up a network card for it, and it's PCI, I figured it would fit right into the Mac, especially because that has PCI in it, so I figured I'd give that a try. Let's clean all this up and get the Mac on the table so we can give it some surgery. If I actually remember how to open it, that is. There we go, look at that. So the optical drive can just, as far as I can tell, just be pulled out of here and replaced really easily. Oh boy. 
and I just broke the plastic piece. I swear, my chair has gotten so squeaky and terrible that now every sudden movement that I make, it just squeaks. Don't ever buy a chair from Costco. Okay, I'm just gonna slide it out from the top here because I cannot seem to get this part. Oh, well I got it out and I just gotta replace this, uh, or swap rather, this rail. And I gotta swap these, the other drive get a quick comparison so they're a little bit different but they're pretty much the same enough where it'll work yep they're pretty much the same that'll be fine so now this drive should just slide right back in place I think it's pretty much in place so we're back in the system again and it's just a traditional PCI with a traditional PCI bracket there yeah, let's go ahead and crack the seal in the network card and put it in here. Oh yeah, check that out. Basic little card, but uh, it'll work just fine. You know, honestly, I really enjoy how easy these Macs are to work on compared to uh, literally anything that's uh, modern day Apple. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna slide this back in place. Oh yeah, look at that. Now we have real networking capability. So this uh, duct tape fix is kind of still holding on for now. I'm probably gonna end up ordering a whole new front piece and just badge swap it. All right, it is now fully reassembled. Let's plug it back in and let's see if the CD drive works. There we go, we're up. Let's test out the drive by installing the software for the network card. Oh wow, I get to break the seal for the first time. Hopefully it works. Yes! Hell yeah, we got fully working Mac now. Let's install this. Not take place while other applications are running. Click continue to, yeah, sure. There we go. Now we have uh, our drivers for the network card. It's gonna reboot. There we go. Oh, that just got me excited. Now we have a working, fully working Mac. Optical drive and all. Let me go grab an ethernet cable. I wanna plug this in. No, I don't think you get gigabit switch privileges. You don't need gigabit. I plugged in the ethernet. Check the switch. Here we go, we have a link. All right, let's open up Netscape and try to connect to the internet. Here it is, here's Netscape. Ooh, Navigator 2.0. All right, well, that didn't quite work. Let's check the control panels. TCP IP, that should be it. Hopefully we obtain an IP. Our ethernet is showing up, so, uh, okay, I think we're actually on the internet now, though. Hold on, hold on, hold on, we're on the internet. Let's try the old net. Uh, let's try restarting. Okay, let's quickly change the date and time. Wow, that's really close. It's actually 2024. Okay, let's try it. I wish Classic Mac OS had a terminal, because Classic Mac OS, unless you install like Xorg for Macintosh, you have no terminal. There we go. We're on the internet with Classic Mac OS. Here, I bet you we can go to Google. Oh, whoa, 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 okay. Yo, calm down. It does not like Google very much. It crashed. Oh, and my mouse no longer works after that. I, I cannot see where my mouse is. Dude, what the hell just happened? Please restart. Uh, my keyboard doesn't work. Classic Mac OS, man. As much as I love it, it can be a pain in the ass sometimes. <laughs> okay, that did it. Yeah, look at that, frog find. What if I search up myself? Oh boy, it's me. It's my Steam profile. Oh my goodness, it tried to load my steam profile that's kind of cool actually whoa this is my friends list and uh, it's team orange in in basic html that's actually really cool i can view the page images oh that's my it's my profile picture on steam oh that's uh xbox in very very low resolution <laughs> is that trip all right i'm having way too much fun with this this is just cool all right, uh, I'm definitely gonna play around with this later, but we are not done yet. I was thinking that I wanted to do something with this machine when I got it all fixed. I just didn't have any games to play. I really wanted to play some games on it. So I took a trip to my local bookstore and I found this. This is Doom 2 for the Macintosh, all, all in here. So uh, yeah, let's install this really quick. I am actually quite curious on how well Doom 2 will run on here. There we go. We install it to the hard drive. Why do I have to restart the computer before playing this game? Okay, whatever. Just do it. All right, 
right now, let's go ahead and play it. It wants 256 colors. Yeah, sure. Do it. Ah, oh, why did we crash? Maybe I have to set the colors manually. There we go, 256. Now we try Doom 2. Oh, well, okay. Sorry, guys. No games. All right, well, you know, for the most part, it works. Everything hardware-wise works now. We have internet. We were able to get on the internet, check out uh, some stuff. That was cool. But uh, yeah, that's probably about it. Hit like if you liked it. If you really like this video, consider supporting me over on Patreon. Dislike if you don't like old Max or if you just hate me. I have a lot more interesting and weird stuff coming up soon, so definitely stay tuned.